Welcome to P2. Today we're going to look at the trapezium rule. Now, the trapezium rule is for when I'm, I want to integrate something. I need to find the area under a curve, but I'm unable to integrate it algebraically. It's too difficult. Or, you know, certainly in P2, it might be an integration that you haven't learnt yet. Okay, but in general, it's usually a, more, a much more difficult one. And what we can do is we can use the trapezium rule to get an approximation for the area under that curve. Now, if I just put some sort of random curve here, okay, and I want to integrate, so I want to find the area between two points of this curve. So I'd need my values of x for a and b for my limits. But obviously to integrate a curve like this might be really difficult. So the idea of splitting up into trapeziums is essentially like this. If I show you in black, think of this as a straight line down here. Cross, cover that straight line up. And then I've got the top of my trapezium there. In this case, the top. So you can see here that trapezium there, line there. And then what I would do is I'd keep on doing that. So I'd keep on having the same width trapeziums. Let me uh, do this one a little bit better. All the way along. So just keep on building up these trapeziums. That's the idea be behind this. And as I build it up all the way to the end, I would have something like this. And then the idea here is that I would have a fixed width, which in my trapezium would be the height, because this is the kind of trapezium that we are basically exaggerated a little bit. But that height there would be my, my base. And then if you think of the trapezium formula, normally you have like A and B. So you know the formula for the area of this is A plus B divided by two times H. And that's essentially what I'm gonna be using to work at the area of each of these trapezium, which will then give me that total area under the curve or an approximation for it anyway. Now, since we're obviously not gonna be using this A and B, we already use A and B. And since these heights are values of Y, that's what we would be using in here. So what we do is we call the first one Y0, and then the second one y1, the third one y2, the fourth one y3, and so on. Okay, so that's what we're looking at um, here. It started at y0, and each one would be an additional number. So y1, y2, and so on. Okay, now what that means is, and this is how we get kind of a nice formula, is that there's a bit of duplication here. So, you know, I'm doing like this plus this divided by 2 times h. This plus this divided by 2 times h. So, if I take the times h out of a bracket, then I'd have this plus this divided by 2. This plus this divided by 2. So, if I also take out that divide by 2, then what that means is I'm essentially doing this plus this, this plus this, this plus this and so on and what hopefully you're noticing is that when i did this plus this then i used the y1 a second time and then i used the y2 a second time and essentially what i've got ended up with is that i've only what used one of these i've used two of all the ones in the middle and i will only use one at the end and that again enables me to have a nice straightforward formula so i'm going to share with you the formula so here it is. So as I said, we take the H and the divide by 2 out. So H over 2 outside. And then I want one of the first ones. And then I want two of every one in the middle. Up to the last but one. And then I want to add the last one. Hopefully that makes sense of why the formula is the way it is. Now, in terms of H, I've got this distance here, which is my B minus A. So B minus A, we're looking for H. And then all I need to do is think about, right, well, 
how many trapeziums have I got? So I'm going to divide by the number of trapeziums. Okay, now that also just leads me into why we're talking about it. You know, why we use that y0. We use that so that this n and this n are going to be the same. You know, the number of trapeziums is essentially now the same as the number of lines. We've actually got one more line than we have trapeziums, but because we started at y0, so look at this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trapeziums. We've got y0, y1, two, three, y4, y5, y6, y7. So that means that it ends up being exactly the same because we started with that y0. Just a, a little bit of reasoning for you guys. Now, let's have a little look at this in practice. Use the trapezium rule with six strips to estimate, and we're going to integrate 4 to the power x between 0 and 3. So six strips means I want six trapezium. Okay, so what I want to do first is I want to work out my value of h. It's nice and easy to do. It's b minus a over n. Now remember, use the formula. Write it down every time, okay, even when you don't need to initially. But when you're doing this practice and revision, write it down each time because what will happen is that you'll just start remembering it without much effort. Okay, each time you write it down, you remember it better. So here's my value of h. Now this is important, okay, because if I think back to just a very, very rough one here, when we had all our trapezi um, under the bottom, and we've got this value of h, this is the increase in x. So if I'm doing one, like in this case, between say 0 and 3, and my h is a half, it means I can work out, well, this is at 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. And that's how I can split it up. So I need that to find my values of x. And then the easiest thing to do is to separate this out into a nice table. And as we were going up in halves, I'm just going to go up in halves here for my x. And next, all I want to do is substitute each x value into my y. Remember, my y here is 4 to the power x. It's what I am integrating. And there's my table complete. Now, I had quite nice numbers. You know, I've picked nice numbers on purpose. When you get this in an exam question or any other question when you're practicing, if you've got decimals, do it to three decimal places. Okay? If you've done each of these to three decimal places, then you can safely give your answer to two decimal places. Okay? So make sure you do these to at least three decimal places. Now, I want to write down my original question. And then I want my approximately equal sign. And then I'm going to start putting in my formula. OK, now, as I said previously, write the formulas down. OK, so in fact, if I move this. And by writing it down, like I said before, it just helps you remember it. Okay, now I'm aware that this formula is given to you in the formula booklet. But I do think, you know, just by writing it down all the time, you're going to remember it. And you don't need to refer to that formula booklet so much. You know, it's there as a backup. But what you want to be able to do for these is make sure that you can just do it very quickly on the fly as you need to. Okay. Now, I'm going to start substituting these in. We've already worked out what h is. So h is a half divided by 2. I'll write it like that. Now, in terms of my y0 to and above, so my first one's y0, y1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and 6. Okay, for my 6 strips. And remember, 6 strips means you'll have 7 values in total because of that y0. Um, again, like I often like to write my y0, y1 and so on just in the table. Just helps me remember them sometimes. 
So we get 1 plus 2 lots of, and then it's just adding these up. So 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, and then plus 64 on the outside. Now, I'm just trying to think, I don't have a formula booklet in front of me, but I've got a funny feeling that the formula booklet puts this one at the front with this one. So like the first and the last one at the front. Okay, I like to keep it at the back. I like to keep these in order as it just makes more logical sense to me. And I find it just easier to think that way. And that gives me 189 on the inside. And then I want to divide that by 4 and I get 47.25 in this case. Now, what a question will sometimes ask you as well is is this an overestimate or an underestimate and you need to know that based on the shape of the graph so what does an exponential look like so this y equals 4 to the power x it's going to look like any kind of other exponential graph like so and obviously we're going from zero this point here to some value at 3, which obviously is at 64, so it's probably a bit steeper than, than mine anyway. And what you want to do is you want to think about, right, well, what's happening when I build my trapezium? So let's imagine instead zooming in on part of the curve. So my curve is like going outwards, if that makes sense. Oh, inwards? I don't know. I don't know if it's going inwards, outwards. <laughs> But if I think of my trapezium, which will look like this, then when I join these two points up, it's going to be above my actual line. And there we are, just trying to make it a little bit tidier, a little bit neater. So what you can see is because of the shape of the curve, when this point and this point are joined with a straight line, that straight line is going to be above the actual curve which is why if that happens on all of them, and it'll happen all the way up on this exponential, it will mean that I get an overestimate because my areas are all just slightly bigger than the area under the curve. Incidentally, if it, my curve is curving in the other way, you'll see there that my line joining the two points will actually go under the curve. Therefore, it will be an underestimate. So you just have to do this based on the shape of the curve. So this type of curve, which we got is an increasing one where that bottom of the curve is almost like a U. Think of it like that. You're going to get an overestimate. And then this type of curve, which is kind of like an N, don't know how else to describe them, um, would be an underestimate. Okay, hopefully that makes uh, sense for you guys. So if I think about this particular question I got here, this one's going to end up being an overestimate. Okay, so it's an overestimate. And if I double check my actual answer in the calculator, you can clearly see here's my integration and 45.4. So you can see that this value is a little bit below this one. So I'm right with my overestimate. Hopefully that made sense and was clear to see. Um, I don't think it's worth really doing another example on this. I will obviously put a few questions up and pop the answers at the end for you to double check. Oh, and I should also say that the more strips we do, as in the more trapezium we use, the more accurate our answer is. So if you ever get a question where it asks you to do it with four strips and then eight strips and then asks you which is the better answer then you can say it's the one with the more strips or more trapezium
So you'll want a diagram something like this. So I've got my three strips and I've clearly shown how, hopefully it's easy to see, but uh, how the th line of the trapezium is above that of the curve. Okay, and that's kind of what you want to be shown with your diagram and then saying that in words, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Just something like this curve passes below the top of that trapezium. And then you just want to say the true area is less. Okay, because it's less than your estimate. Something along those lines. Okay, guys, hope uh, you found this useful. I do think this is probably the easiest part to, to kind of finish P2 on. But uh, hopefully you found some use in this video. And don't forget to subscribe.